Hello and welcome to our lesson on item management where we will be discussing manufactured item management. Today's topics will include a bill of materials, GL account mapping, build creation, and on-hand quantities. So with that, let's get started. So before we begin creating and managing our manufactured items, let's first go to our items list where we can explore a little further in how to set up our manufactured items. So to do that, let's go to Accounting and Items from the drop-down underneath the Inventory section. So here I can click Search, and this will show me all of my items that I have on my list. If you want to search for just manufactured items, you can click the Type field, Uncheck All, just choose Manufactured from the drop-down, and click Search. This will limit your view for only those items that are a manufactured type. To view and manage these items, you can simply click on the item name, which will populate the item details page. Here you can see information such as an image of the item, the bill of materials that the manufactured item is consisting of, as well as any accounting, pricing, and costing information as well. Now let's go back to the items list and begin adding a brand new manufactured item and explore what we can accomplish. Now when you think of manufactured items, in most cases people think of heavy machinery or complex mechanisms, but this doesn't have to be the case for a manufactured item. It could be anything that you're making a want a completed good from a bunch of different raw materials or individual items. So to use an example today, I like to bake, so I'm going to create a chocolate cake. Now the type of item is going to be manufactured, and once I choose manufactured, You'll see that my reorder point and units of measure comes in from the drop down here, but I also have a bill of materials section, and these are going to be the individual items that make up my completed good or manufactured item. Now, category you can choose here from the drop down. You can also add a brand new category right here, and I'll say baking, and I'll click add. So now I have a new category for my items, and that will be automatically associated here. And my division, I can choose anything from the drop down. I also have a plus tool here to add a brand new division within our company, but I'll just say it's operations. Now, the reorder point is an interesting concept for a manufactured item, which I'd like to touch on just a little bit. So, usually, a reorder point is associated with an inventory item because you need to order more of those inventory items so that you don't run under your desired amount of stock on hand. However, for a manufactured item, these aren't things that you're ordering, they're things that you're creating, they're things that you're building in-house. So your reorder point is actually how much you want to build and not run underneath a specific number of quantity on hand. So let's say that I always want to have five chocolate cakes on hand. So I'll say five as their reorder point, but keep in mind this again means the amount to build. You always want to have five completed products on hand. Now your units of measure set you can choose anything from here. I can choose a poundage which means that you know the cake should weigh let's say two pounds. I can say a length which means in millimeters I can do kind of a dimensions thing or I can just specifically say a count. I want five on hand therefore it's eaches. Now if you want you can also upload an image of the cake by clicking here and then you can upload an image of the cake very easily so that when you save it, the image of the cake will be there for your reference. Description is something that's going to populate with the item when you add it on something like a sales order or transactions like invoices and builds and things of that nature. So here I can just say chocolate cake, vanilla frosting, something of that nature, so that at least there's a description with the item when it populates on orders or transactions. Now here are your bill of materials. And here you can actually choose the select field and choose any of the items that go into this finished good. So for instance here I can add cocoa powder, eggs, and these are essentially my ingredients that make up the cake. And then I can choose say almond milk, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and finally sugar flour, vanilla extract. And now I have all of the 
individual ingredients that make up the cake and I can say how many of these items go into building the cake. So let's say I need to include two eggs and let's say it's 0.2 for, let's just say it's 0.2 for basically everything else because it's not a full package of whatever it is that I'm buying. It's just a percentage of the package. So I'll just say, I'll just round up to 0.2 and let's just assume that that's accurate. So here we have all of our ingredients for the cake. And now I can scroll down and we have our options for pricing. Now you have a few different options here for cost and pricing. One is just to enter a cost. So I can essentially guesstimate, okay, this this costs me, let's say, eight bucks to make. I can also choose calculate from items and that's gonna tell me my cost as well. It's going to take all of these individual costing which is essentially the cost by item times the quantity chosen here and show me my cost that it takes to make it. The one thing I don't have calculated in here is labor. And I can choose to add labor here inside of the build. So I can just add a service item called labor and put in you know, how many hours or minutes it takes to make that cake. Or I can leave that outside of the cost projection and calculate labor outside of the build with a time entry or a timesheet. I'm going to go the latter route. I'll calcul calculate that in a timesheet and associate it to a task to build the cake. And for here, I'm just going to round up our cost to, let's say, $4. Now the price, we can either enter a markup, which means I want to charge, let's say, 20% of that. Therefore, I'm going to sell this cake for 4.8 cents. I can also calculate from the items pricing as well, but since these are individual ingredients that aren't going to be sold, I don't have any prices effectively associated to these items. I'm only buying them, so I only have costs associated. So let's say I'm going to mark this up 40%. Therefore, I'm going to sell the cake at $5.60. And this price varies by the size of the cake or the amount of ingredients it takes to build the cake, which is all listed here. Now I have my accounting section. And here I can choose an income account, an asset account, and a cost of goods sold account. The reason why you need these particular accounts is because once the item is built, it is effectively an inventory item, which means it has a value on your inventory asset account. You incurred cost to build that item, and you're going to sell it, which is going to generate you income. And that's why you have those three particular accounts. So I am going to associate this with my sales account for income. I'm going to associate this with my inventory account for my asset and my cost of goods sold. I'm going to label this as supplies and then I'm good to go. Now if you're tracking classes and this is always going to be a specific class, you can choose that here and you can do likewise with the location. If this item is always going to be associated to one specific inventory location, you can choose that here as the default location. Otherwise you can leave them blank, they're not required. And then I have a custom field at the line item level, which means I can capture that here. Let's say that this cake is two feet in area. So now I can save my manufactured item, and you can see the image loads over here on the left. And if I click view more, I can see the preview and not only see it, but click on it to see a bigger image. And I can also download it here as well. And I can see and preview all of my information. Now, once I have the item saved, I cannot change the type of the item. That is a locked field, and if you need to change the item, it's, it's easier to deactivate the item or create a copy and deactivate the original. If there is default tasks associated with this item, you can add that here, and, this, and here you can add a library task. So if I choose the drop down, I can say, okay, we need to bake the batter, so we can save and close to add the task. We need to mix the ingredients, and we need to decorate the cake. So I can add all these individual tasks, and you can see the desired hours for each task. Therefore, we have tasks automatically associated to the item that which need to be completed. And now I have my manufactured item 
all configured to fit my needs. And I can choose save and close. And we'll see that item right here on the items list. And you'll see the quantity on hand is zero because we haven't built anything yet. So manufactured items are different from other items. And specifically, they're different from inventory and item groups. Item groups and manufactured items get confused quite often. And the difference is, is that an item group is almost like a bundle. It's a group of items, but it doesn't make one completed good. It just sits underneath one line item. So you're selling a bunch of individual parts, but they're not making a finished product. Whereas a manufactured item is a bunch of separate raw materials that are going to be incorporated into one final product, and those individual materials will no longer be in existence. They will be actually incorporated into one specific finished good. And inventory is different from both of those because it's something that you're ordering from your vendors that's going to sit on hand. But it's one distinct item in and of itself. Now, another key difference between manufactured items and other items is that stock is not relinquished upon the invoice. Usually you invoice an item and then stock is relinquished. And that happens in the case of item groups and inventory items. With a manufactured item, stock is removed upon building the item because that is when the item is made and that is when stock is relinquished from the individual raw material. So let's go through that process of building a manufactured item and just explore what happens with that process. So to do that, let's click accounting and builds from the drop down underneath the inventory section. So here I can click the add button, but if you want to view previously created builds, you can click the search button. And you have a bunch of search filters up here as well to filter by location where the build is located, the status, whether it's active or voided, the date range for the build, and what specific item was built. But if I just click the add button, we, we can begin building our new item, which is chocolate cake. And you'll see that the category is located in parentheses to differentiate in case you had something similar on your items list. So here, once I choose the item, my bill of materials falls down underneath, and each of these are hyperlinks. So if I click the cocoa powder, for instance, I'm going to jump right into the item details so that if I need to preview anything or manage any information regarding the item, it's one click away. Now, the quantity to build is where we decide how many chocolate cakes do we want to build. And that's a big decision that we need to make before we go any further. So how many chocolate cakes do we need to make? Let's say we need to do two chocolate cakes. Now your date is the date upon building. So if you're doing this, if you're referencing the build after it was made, maybe it was due yesterday, you can change the date. But if it's being built today, we can keep it today. And we can also change the reference number as well. Now the location field is where this item is going to be stocked after it's built. So here I can choose an inventory location so that once this is built, two stock will be added to the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania location. Now down below you'll see a bunch of red statuses and one is letting us know that all of these items require an inventory location to be associated because they are all inventory items. So the system needs to know where we're extracting these items from, what location are they going to come from. We also need to know, based on that location, if we have enough quantity on hand. So for instance, if I click cocoa powder, I can see that I have 10 in my Philadelphia, Pennsylvania location. So I can select that, and that red warning for both goes away because I've facilitated those needs. And I can keep going down the list and associating my inventory locations so that all of those red warnings go away and I am on my way to creating my finished build. So now I have selected all of my inventory locations. These are where these individual quantities are going to be extracted from. Now there's a lot of quantities over here on the right, so let's talk about those real quick. The QTY or quantity column shows how much it takes to build one manufactured item. And this is pulling from our list of bill of materials. You remember we had two eggs and everything else was 0.2, and you'll see those here. 
quantity on hand is how much you have on these locations which we chose earlier. And quantity needed is the quantity to build, which is up here too, times the quantity in this location. And this will let you know if you have enough stock on hand to facilitate your needs. If I was to change this and say I need to build six, I would immediately get a warning in my eggs because I don't have enough quantity on hand to build the quantity needed. But as soon as I go back to two, that warning disappears. So now I have all the requirements needed to build my two chocolate cakes and I can come down and click save in order to build my two chocolate cakes. You'll see that the quantity to build is now grayed out, meaning that it's locked because now we have two items on hand, which are the chocolate cake. The only thing I can do here is void the item build if I've done something wrong or something's inaccurate about this. I can only void it and start again because this is actually a transaction. You're removing inventory from on hand with these individual items and you're adding inventory in the form of a manufactured item. So let's click save and close and we'll go back to the item, the items builds list and we'll see that number two, chocolate cake, quantity to build was two, and we can see the location as well. Now if I go back to my items list by clicking accounting and items underneath the inventory section and click search, you'll now see that my chocolate cake, instead of having zero quantity on hand, I now have two. And if I click that hyperlink, I can see when I click search, the item build is adding two on hand stock quantities. Now once your manufactured item is built and you have stock on hand, you're ready to begin selling that item. And after that, it functions much like an inventory item. It's going to hit your income account. It's going to extract value from your inventory asset and calculate cost based on the cost of goods sold. So that was a look at the process of creating, setting up, and building your manufactured items inside of Striven.